Did you see the 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander, the big reveal that was online? It's been redesigned with a distinctive exterior design, which I'm not a big fan of, at least not right now. Maybe it'll grow on me. It does have a nicer look on the inside. It now shares its platform and engine with the Nissan Rogue. It will go on sale in April, starting at just around $27,000. I recently finished up my 2021 Outlander PHEV review, the plug-in electric hybrid uh, vehicle, and that's the only Outlander trim or style that you can buy for 2021. There won't be a 2021 Outlander by itself. They're waiting for this one right here, which was just released online. This new Outlander for 2022, 2.5 liter inline four, 181 horses and 181 pound-feet of torque. Same CVT, same engine specs, identical to the Rogue, although the Outlander should be a bit heavier and it's got an extra row of seats. That's pretty impressive. Looks like Land Rover is looking to make a Defender pickup truck, something that will compete with the Ford Ranger. Take a look at this photo. The all-new Land Rover Defender has been a resounding success, which isn't surprising considering it replaced one of the most iconic and capable off-roaders of all time. After being on sale for only a few months, the Defender 110 has already outsold its predecessor in America, and sales will only increase when Land Rover adds the more affordable Defender 90 to its lineup in the spring. Potentially, this isn't the only new Defender variant Land Rover is plotting. There have been lots of rumors that Land Rover has been planning to build a pickup version of the Defender, but the project was allegedly scrapped, according to Autocar, however. The project appears to be back on. Speaking to the publication, Nick Collins, Jaguar Land Rover's Executive Director of Vehicle Programs, believes, quote, there is customer demand, end quote, for Defender pickup, and quote, there were no structural limitations, end quote, to building one. He goes on to say, we always said the Defender would be a family, Collins added, hinting that we should watch this space when asked about launching a Defender pickup. Did you hear about the uh, five new lifestyle bundles you can add to your 2021 Ford Bronco Sport? These are customizable items you can add that are different dealer installed accessory bundles. Got bike, water, snow, camping, and cargo. My favorite is camping. Here's a quick rundown of each. The bike includes roof rail crossbars, Ford all-weather floor mats, Yakima hitch-mounted bike rack, Yakima roof rack mounted basket, the water, uh, Yakima awning, roof rail crossbars, Ford all-weather floor mats, and a Yakima kayak carrier with locks. The camping bundle, Yakima awning, roof rail crossbars, Ford all-weather floor mats, Yakima Skyrise HD two-person rooftop tent, my favorite, cargo, roof rail crossbars, Ford all-weather floor mats, Yakima 16 cubic foot roof mounted cargo box. Last but not least, snow, roof rail crossbars, Ford all-weather floor mats, and a Yakima hitch mounted ski snow sport rack. These bundles are available at the time of your purchase through the dealership. Customers can even build and create their own accessory bundles as well. So the least satisfying car on sale today is a Mazda. Specifically, according to Consumer Reports, the Mazda CX-3 scored lowest on owner satisfaction for specific models. And that wasn't the only Japanese brand to score low. The Nissan Kicks came in second, followed by the Infiniti QX60 and QX50. Rounding out the bottom five is the Jeep Compass. On the other end of the spectrum, my Tesla uh, continues to be absolutely loved by their owners with the Model 3. That's what I have checking in as the most satisfying. Additionally, the Model S and Model Y claim third and fourth spots Runner-up to the Model 3 is the Kia Telluride, also a favorite of mine. Booyah! And Mazda redeemed itself by taking fifth in the top category with the MX-5 Miata. Here's a new one. Airstream plans to make an electric-assisted camper for EVs. Airstream is one of America's most popular camper companies, and now they're going to make a product designed for EVs. This from their vice president of product development. The idea is moving beyond concept phase and the path to an EV trailer is becoming much more clear. Stay tuned, end quote. Airstream isn't the only company pursuing this avenue. Last year, Lordstown Motors and Camping World announced that those two companies are teaming up for a number of products, including an electrified travel camper. As far as partnerships go with Airstream, nothing's been announced just yet, uh, but they go on to say Airstream is in active discussions with major players in the space, discussions about everything from marketing engagements 
to more technical partnerships. The timing of this is pretty good because uh, not too long in the near future, we're going to be seeing some electric trucks. We've got the Tesla Cybertruck, the Rivian, the GMC Hummer EV, the Ford F-150 electric. And these vehicles are going to be towing things. So why not make an EV specific trailer? So Airstream, good on you. On a somewhat related note, Ford says they'll only sell electric passenger cars in Europe from 2030. So the phasing out of gasoline vehicles is certainly on the move. So these electrification plans in Europe are definitely moving in the next nine years, phasing out the gasoline or combustion engines. So the Blue Oval will only sell zero emission cars from 2030, meaning traditional models like the Fiesta and Focus will lose their gasoline engines in Europe. The first step towards a purely electric passenger car lineup is to electrify the entire portfolio by the middle of 2026. So in other words, Ford will only sell plug-in hybrids and EVs in five years from now before discontinuing the other type of engines uh, four years later. We've already seen the electrification of Fords begin with the Mustang Mach-E and other hybrids. How long before this trend moves into the U.S.? Well, I'm going to keep these short and somewhat sweet updates coming to you on a regular basis. So if you have any suggestions or have any ideas that are coming to mind or maybe some questions you have about what I just talked about or things that you're seeing in the automotive landscape, let me know in the comment section below. We'll continue the conversation there. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks for watching. Adios. Thanks for watching. Please cr click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.